in order to truly solve the climate crisis, we have to address climate change itself, but we also have to address the injustices that helped fuel the climate crisis and are making the impacts worse for people that are already suffering. Around the time that I graduated college, I joined in with the growing coalition of young people living in the district to try and call attention to and ultimately stop the Dakota Access Pipeline. Then Donald Trump won. I still remember vividly being with a crew of organizers on election night. We, who had been fighting the Dakota Access Pipeline, had to come to terms with the near certainty that Donald Trump would decide to approve the pipeline and that this movement would ultimately lose. DC Reinvest started when indigenous leaders at Sandy Rock put out a national call for cities and states and tribes across the country to start targeting the banks that were bankrolling fossil fuel infrastructure. So a group of six of us or so held a round dance and rally outside of a Wells Fargo branch next to the White House. Over the next few months, we worked with Councilmember David Grosso to introduce a resolution in the DC Council to reassess our accounts with Wells Fargo and ultimately shut them down. We did a lot of the initial research to figure out what wrongdoings Wells Fargo had actually committed and what reasons we could give in this resolution to faithfully divest from the bank. The success of this coalition entails a year to two years, five years, because they have a contract that's five years, so we need to plan that far ahead. He's definitely thinking two, three steps down the line when a lot of people think about right now. This is right across from the office buildings that the White House staff work in, and if even one or two of the thousands of people that are passing by us say we want to join in, that's great. <laughs> that's how we build our movement, that's how we win. In May, 10 of us essentially hijacked a budget hearing of the city council and called on DC's chief financial officer to continue to move forward this resolution to divest from Wells Fargo. At the end of the hearing, Councilmember Jack Evans spent about 15 minutes grilling the DC CFO on the feasibility of divesting from Wells Fargo. We had put a lot of effort in leading up to that hearing and came out of it knowing that although we had a long way to go, we were well on our way to victory. What we don't want is for DC to move its money out of Wells Fargo and just put it back into Citibank. Instead, we want DC to move its money out of Wells Fargo and put it into local institutions that are founded on principles of sustainability and social equity. The financial system and the fossil fuel industry are trillion dollar industries. Any individual action will barely register on their balance sheets. But if enough people and then enough larger institutions like colleges or cities choose also to divest, banks are going to start feeling the impacts. Our targets underestimate our experience as organizers. And often they underestimate the determination and conviction that we have to see this through. They think they can outweigh us, that if they only stall for long enough, we'll give up and move on to something else, but they miss the resilience and, and incredible determination that those of us who are fighting for our futures will hold.